I bring us to YouTube. Okay, it's it's we are on YouTube now. Okay, so we can get started. Yeah. Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome back to our CFM, uh, CFSM seminar today. So today we have Dr. Cheng Shao uh, to be our speaker. And uh, Dr. Cheng Shao is an associate professor at the Shenzhen, Shenzhen Institute of Advanced Technology, SDIAT. He received his bachelor from Hajun University of Science and Technology in 2013 and his PhD degree from Shanghai Jiao Tong University in 2018. Prior to joining SDIAT, he was a postdoc research associate at the University of Tokyo during 2018 to 2022. He had also a one year's visiting at Carnegie Mellon University. And his research interest is in the multi-scale modeling of electrons and the phonons in the nanostructure with applications in thermal management in electronic devices and the thermal electric and energy conversion. So with that, we would like to welcome our today's speaker, Dr. Cheng Xiao. And uh, Cheng, uh, feel, please feel free to uh, start your talk and uh, uh, the stage is yours now. Okay, thank you for the introduction. So good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening. My name is Chen Xiao, and uh, today the title of my talk is Computational Modeling of Nanoscale Thermal Transport. This is the outline of the, my presentation. I will first give some background and the motivations. Then I will give some review on the most uh, commonly used uh, numerical method to study nanoscale heat transfer. Basically, there are molecular dynamic simulation and uh, Boltzmann transport equations. And uh, after that, I will uh, talk about some my research on phonon transport in nanostructure. Basically, the phonon bundle scaling problem, the thermal transport in quantum dot super lattice, and the ray tracing simulation in nanostructure. In the last, I will also briefly talk about some, some of my work on fluid dynamic in confined space. So here is the motivations why we want to study nanoscale heat transfer. As we all know, the thermal management in electronic device is the bottleneck problem for the developing of the semiconductors. And uh, as we can see from the right-hand side figure, the local heat, uh, heat flux can reach a value of the uh, 100 kilowatt per centimeter square, which is uh, even larger than the heat flux on the sun, sun surface from the IR image we can see that the uh, temperature of the packaging size of the device can excess one, one, 100 degrees. And uh, as can be seen from these figures, with the increasing in the, the, the diet temperature, the lifetime of the uh, LED device or computer will decrease largely. Another motivation for large-scale thermal transfer is the thermal electric energy conversion. We know that the thermal electric device is a solid device to convert heat to e electricity. Uh, compared to the other energy con conversion method, the thermal electric device is compact and uh, maintenance free. So it's an uh, ideal a power source for, for small, small, small device like transistor and uh, sensor for the Internet of Things. And the power generation by efficiency in the thermal electric device is defined by the ZT, which is the which is a function of the electric conductivity of the material, the feedback coefficient, and the thermal conductivity of the material. One way to increase the ZT factor of the thermal uh, electric device or material is to decrease the uh, the thermal conductivity of the material through large structure. In the past years, we have achieved large reduce in thermal conductivity in nano structure materials like super lattice, nano crystal, or nano pores. So phonons are the dominant heat carriers in the in, in dielectric and the semiconductors. 
as we know that the heat are carried by the atomic vibrations. Uh, actually, the due to the periodicity of the light is the 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 same the seemingly random vibration can be project to to different vibration mode or normal mode. And uh, for a certain material, we have some thermal dispersion, which tells us what's the frequency of the corresponding wave, wave vectors. And uh, due to the wave particle uh, duality, each, each final mode can be either treated as a final wave or final wave packet or the particles. So one property of the final particle is the mean free press, which tells you how much, how, how long distance the particle will transfer before collide with other particles. And uh, from the final gas models, the, the thermal conductivity of a material can be writing as a summation of the contribution of each final mode. And the contribution of each final mode is the, the heat capacity times the group velocity and the times the mean free press of the of the of the of the certain mode. So basically if we can know the heat capacity, a group velocity and the mean free press of each each vibration mode, we can know the thermal property of our materials. And uh, there are two pictures to understand the thermal transport. One is from the real space based on the molecular dynamic simulations. And the one is based, one is based on the receiver space uh, particle-based pictures. And the governing equation for the receiver space is uh, Boltzmann transport equations. There are some advantage and the disadvantage of each method. In the molecular dynamic simulations, the input for the simulation is the interatomic potential or the atomic structures. And uh, we can control the dynamic of the system by controlling the thermostat. Uh, actually, there are some limitation in molecular dy dynamic simulation because of the limitation in the computer computational powers. So actually, the, the size of the molecular dy dynamic simulation is limited to a free uh, nanometers. On the other hand, by solving the Monte, Monte Carlo simulations, uh, Boltzmann transfer equation, we can we can we can simulate the thermal transfer process in a really large uh, scales. But uh, for the Monte Carlo simulation, we need some basic input like phonon dispersion, phonon lifetime, and uh, and the phonon transmission at the interface. And uh, normally, this property are difficult to extract. Uh, this slide show the uh, some illustration of the molecular dynamic uh, simulation. Basically, from the uh, given the potentials, we can know what's the energy or the force between two term, two atoms at a certain distance. And the, from the Newton's law of uh, emotion, we can get the trajectory of the each atoms with res with with with, re with respect to the times. And the, from the trajectory information. We can do some post post analysis post analysis to get the temperature, heat flux, and the other information in the systems. Uh, to calculate the thermal conductivity of a material, we have two commonly used approach. One is called the long equilibrium molecular dynamic simulations. So this method is uh, very similar to the what we do in the uh, experiment measurement. So basically. We maintain a temperature difference on the hot side and the cold side of the systems, and uh, we can we can one, we can track the temperature profile and the heat flux across the system, across the system, and from the temperature gradient and the heat flux, we can get the property like the thermal conductivity or the thermal boundary conductance at the interface. Another commonly used method is the cold green Kruber method which is based on the fluctuation dissipation of the heat flux in the system. If we do the autocorrelation of the total heat flux in the, in the system based on the green Kruber formula, we can get the total thermal conductive system. Uh, one thing we need to keep in mind is that we need to do a lot of ensemble average to, to get the converged thermal conductivities of the systems. Compared to another, uh, compared to the molecular dynamic simulation, another common use approach is to solve the Boltzmann transfer equation. 
in this in this picture or in this thing, we treat each phonon phonon as a, a sonic particles, and the Gaffley equation is the boltzmann Schwarzschild equation. However, the difficulty in this approach is the the boltzmann Schwarzschild equation is a high dimensional um, equation and is a integral differential equations. So it's bilateral difficult to 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 solve. Even though we have some relaxation time approximation to simple, simplify the process a bit, but it's still a little bit difficult. And uh, one 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 robust and uh, uh, general way to solve the Boltzmann transfer equation is based on the more color uh, particle simulation method. So basically, we use the computer uh, computer to directly directly sample track the, the each final particle in the system. And uh, from that way, we can get the total summer property of the systems. So in the next, I will talk, I will talk about some of my research, uh, research work based on the molecular, simula molecular dynamic simulation. In particular, I will talk about two problems we, we have uh, studied in the past. The first one is the phonon boundary scattering at the different surface. And uh, the under, another one is the phonon dynamic in the uh, in, in complex system like the quantum dot systems. So we all know that the phonon or wave were scattering at the surface and the free boundary of our materials. And the one big motivation is that the, the thermal conductivity of lala wires. Uh, some paper in 2008 found that the thermal conductivity of silicon lala wires 100 times reduced compared to the bulk silicon. And even well, some the the final particle are fully diffusive, scattering at the boundary. The predict thermal conductivity is still larger than the than the measurement. So there is a mystery on why the thermal conductivity of lava wire is so low compared to the bulk phase. And uh, there are some numerical study found that the the morphology or the structure of the boundary have a quite not impact on the effective thermal conductive or silicon membrane. And uh, one important parameter in the to understand thermal transfer in lala wire or thin film is the specular specularity parameters at the interface. And uh, the the one of the most commonly used model we have now is uh, ZMAN's model, which is developed by ZMAN in 1967. Basically, it says that the specularity P is a function of the root mean square roughness of the surface, the wave vector, and the incident angle of the system. But whether this formula is sufficient to explain the final boundary scattering is still under debate. So in this work, we, we propose or well, we develop a final wave pack simulation method to, to directly study the uh, a phonon scattering at a different type of surface, for example, the smooth surface, period, periodic rough surface, or random surface. Uh, let me see. So the, the, the basic idea or the, the most important formula for the wave pack simulation is like this. So basically, based on the, the eigenvector of certain phonon mode, we activate uh, 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 small displacement and velocity in the system to trigger certain funnel uh, with packet. And after that, we, we monitor the dynamic of uh, atoms in the system with time. And from, from the, from the uh, displacement and velocity information, we can know how the funnel are scattering at a different type of boundaries. And the first, we look at the funnel scattering at the smooth boundaries. We found that at the smooth boundaries, the final wave, wave packet was split into diff, two different wave packets. And uh, this is the detailed information. We found that the, the uh, wave vector in the in the direction uh, with uh, wave vector in the direction parallel parallel to the interface is conserved. We also applied the final wave packet estimation to study the final scattering at rough periodic rough surface. And this figure show the reflect energy distribution for, for different polarization. 
For example, the TA1 polarization, TA2 polarization, or the LA longitudinal acoustic polarizations. This is the overall, and uh, we define the we define the energy in the mirror reflect direction as the compared to the total inside energy as the specular specularity parameters. We find that the different polarizations polarization have a quite different specularity parameters. And the overall, the specularity parameters decrease with the increase in the surface depths or surface roughness. However, one notable finding we have is that different, different polarization have a quite different specularity parameters, and the results are different from the prediction of the Zeeman formulas. Uh, another question is the coherent. Co uh, coherent energy after the reflections, we we know that this we define this the energy in this region as the specularity parameter. However, we can say that we can see that the uh, wave packet are split into surface uh, surf, surface sub 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 wave packet with well defined uh, wave vector and uh, group velocity. So, like this, like this, these two ones, and uh, and we. And uh, in 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 practic in some structure like super lattice, the the uh, we, uh the phase information after scattering is quite important for the interference or for the fan band back band gap. So the question is, what's the ratio of coherent energy after the re reflections? So to 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 understand the uh, coherent energy ratio after reflection, we we also track the energy in the receiver space. So basically, we apply the spatial Fourier transform to the to the velocity of of each atoms in the real space, and uh, from that we can get the energy distribution in the receiver space or in case space. First, we check what's the what's the smallest smallest mesh size required to to achieve a uh, converged energy. We find that this value is small sufficient to to achieve a uh, converged energy in both real space and the receiver space. And uh, from the energy distribution in the receiver space, we can see two, two, two well-defined peaks in the case space, which corresponding to the two wave packet we saw in the real space. And this is the, here, this slide shows the dynamic energy, dynamic of energy transport in both real space and in receiver space. Uh, so this, and uh, we can see that this two this two peak in the receiver space comes co corresponding to the to the energy distribution of these two sub sub packets in the real space, and from the from the energy of the well defined peaks, we can get the coherent energy ratios, and we define the other energy as the incoherent energy. So here is the result of the coherent energy distribution for final packet scattering at the amorphous, amorphous coating surface. We can see that different polarization as well have a different coherent energy ratios. And in general, the coherent energy ratios uh, increase with the increase in the wavelength of the certain wave packet. That can be that that can be explained by, by the fact that. With the increasing in the wavelengths, the 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 static fluctuation in the uh for the uh, in the the fluctuation in the density or in in the uh harmonic property of the material is reduced. We also apply the the method to study the coherent energy at the rough surface. We can see that with with the increasing the with the increasing in the roughness of the surface, the, the, the total coherent energy ratio generally decreased compared to the less rough case. And this is explained by the coupling between the width packet and the localized mode uh, for the vibration in the near the rough regions. In the, in the next part, we also apply the molecular dynamic simulation to study the so much transport in colloid the quantum dot super lattice. So quantum dot are nanoparticle, particle, lala inorganic particle covered by organic ligands. And due to the turnover 
uh, electric and uh, optical properties, quantum belt have many applications from transistor to photovoltaic device. So in this work, we apply the first scale, full scale atomic simulation to understand the thermal transport in the quantum dot super lattice. And this figure shows the assembling process of the quantum dot. And uh, we also verified the bound distribution and the angle distribution in the system. And uh, it matched well with the report literatures. And uh, one big motivation for the for us to study the thermal transport in another crystal or quantum dot super lattice is that in some perfect paper, they found that the, the, the coherent mode in this system uh, have a strong correlation with the, with the size of the particles. And they propose that we can turn the, we can turn the thermal property of the system by turning the particle size. Because if there is a coherent, there will be some band gap in the 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 structure and the total thermal property can also be turned by turn the turn the position and the uh, widthness of the band gap. So the the main question uh, question we want to answer in this work is what's the contribution of coherent phonon mode to thermal transport and what are the type of heat carries in colloidal quantum dot. So we also apply some large-scale molecular dynamic observation to understand the thermal transport to, to these structures. So the, at first, we try to project the vibration of each atoms into the corresponding normal mode. And this is the uh, spectral energy density or the phonon dispersion we got. Actually, the spectral energy density is too blur to extract, to extract any useful information. So in the uh, so after that we instead of try to track try to track the velocity of each atoms we track the velocity of each quantum dot and uh, using by using the velocity of the quantum dot we can also project to some coherent mode and this is the spectral energy density we obtain after the, using the velocity of the quantum dot and uh, from that we can get the the spectral energy density at the different wave vectors. And we can see some well-defined peaks in the spectral energy density. And from that peak, we can, we can get the reaction time of the coherent mode. In general, the lifetime of the coherent mode decreases with the increasing in frequency. And uh, after do some simple math, we find that the contribution of the coherent mode to some conductivity is extremely small, even though the, the lifetime of the coherent mode in the, is on the scale of 10 picosecond. And uh, the reason for the extremely small contribution to thermal conductivity is the, is the total number of coherent mode are very scarcely compared to the all the available vibration mode in the system, because the, the number of coherent mode is proportional to the number of quantum dot but the, the total number of vibration mode is proportional to the number of atoms. So the, the, the coherent mode have a, the population of the coherent mode is much more compared to the uh, total phonon mode. To further confirm the, the coherent mode have like negligible contribution to thermal conductivity in this system, we also, we also introduce some vibration in the, the size of quantum dot. For example, we compare the thermal conductivity of uniform size quantum dot system, small size vibration system, and the large size vibration system. The reason we do this research is uh, do this study is that if if there is some coherent phonon in the system, uh, once we introduce the size of uh, size variations, the co coherence in the system will be destroyed, and the thermal conduct we can see some obvious temperature. We can see some obvious difference in the thermal conductivity, but the, the resulting thermal conductivity for three different systems at a different temperature is shown in these figures. We can see that the thermal conductivity for three different systems are fall within the area bar of each other, which confirm our uh, 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 finding that the coherent phonon have uh, in, uh, like natural contributing to thermal conductivity in this system. 
And uh, we also find some very weak temperature dependence compared to the typical temperature dependence found in, in, in crystal materials, which means that the, the heat carriers are dominated by diffusive mode in the system in, instead of the wave-like phonon particle in, uh, phonon mode in the system. We also study the turnability of the heat transfer in the colloidal quantum dot system. So what we do is we, 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 we construct a system with different uh, ligand coverage, for example, from, from 0 0.1 ligands per nanometer square to 3.6 ligands per nanometer square. And this is a total thermal conductivity as a function of the ligand densities. We find that uh, the total thermal conductivity first decrease and then increase with the ligand densities. Uh, by 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 checking the uh, binding energy between quantum dot, we find that this is due to the competing effect between the binding energy from quantum dot ligand conduction and the quantum dot quantum dot direct direct conduction, because at the low uh, ligand density co uh, coverage, the structure is less stable and there are some forcing between quantum dot at the low at low ligand density coverage ratios. Uh, so in, in the low ligand coverage ratios, the quantum dot, quantum dot direct uh, uh, binding energy is large. But with, with the increasing in the uh, ligand density, the quantum dot will separate by, separate by the ligands. And the, most of the binding energy are through quantum dot ligands indirect binding uh, connections. And the, the competing between these two uh, binding channel leading into the non-monotonic dependence of the thermal conductivity on the ligand density. So we also apply some atomic scale tools to, to understand what's the spectral contribution of uh, to thermal conductivity in this system. We found the first figure shows what's the accumulated thermal conductivity as a function of the frequency. We can see that most of the uh, heat are carried, most of the summer heat or summer conductivity are contributed to from the vibration mode in the frequency range of 0 0.8, 0 0.8 to 5 terahertz. And uh, we also analysis the, the vibrational density vibration density of, of vibrational density of state of different different atoms, different particles. For example, we plot the vibration density of the quantum dot center of mass. The ligand center of mass, the ligand, the, the atomic vibration density of in the ligand and the, the atomic vibration density in the quantum dot, we found that the 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 measure the the the, the most uh the, the summer conductivity have a high high summer conduct the, the frequency region have a high summer conductivity also have a high overlap in the vibration density of state, which means that the heat is conduct between quantum dot. And the ligands through the overlap in the density of state. After that, I will switch to another commonly used method called Boltzmann transport equations. So in this in this in this method, we basically track the we treat each phonon as a, a particles. So based on the conservation of numbers, the the number total number of the phonon particle in the in the country, in the final box, the the, the changing rate of the particle in the final box is, is equal to the number of particles drifting in to the number of particles scattering in. So basically, it's this formula. If we rewrite the formula in a bit, it can be written in this form. Uh, in this form. So uh, uh, this is still quite difficult to, to solve because it's an uh, in, uh, integral dif dif uh, differential equation because the collision is basically a uh, integral term cons uh, cons uh, inter in integral term uh, offer different channels. So if we make the steady state assumption and the small temperature gradient approximation, and also using the relaxing time approximation, we can rewrite uh, the above form uh, equation in this simple, simple form. So basically, uh, here we, we introduce the relaxed time of each phonon mode. So basically, after that, the, the total 
distribution of the final particle is equal to the two part. One part is the equilibrium part, which follow the born einstein statistic. And another part is the non-equilibrium part, which is driven by the temperature gradient or, uh, in, the, in the system times the, times the reaction time of the certain mode. Uh, uh, so the pop final population are the most fundamental property to study the, the summer property of the system. If we load the, if we load the final distribution, we can easily write the heat flux in the system as the sum, as a summation of, as a multiple of the, uh, energy each, uh, carried by each final particle as well as the lambda distribution and the blue phase T. Similarly, we can apply, we can also, uh, based on the Fourier law, we can write the summer conductive tensor of the system as the summation of the different form model. And uh, if we make the isotropic uh, assumption, we can write the summer conductivity in the form of gas models. So in this in this approach, the most difficult parameters is the relaxing time. So how to, uh, actually there are some weird is is established method to to calculate the final reaction time based on the famous golden rule. So basically, as I mentioned, only the collision term is uh, integral of the different final uh, of a different uh, form, uh, scattering channels, and uh, there are some open source package like the final BT uh, CMBT or other mode to 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 solve the to solve the uh, famous, uh, the Boltzmann transport equation and get the uh, formal relaxing time. However, even though we can do this in this approach, it's still quite difficult. So the question is, are there any simple method if we just want to load the effective, effective summer conductivity of the materials? Actually, the answer is yes. So let's take this simple exam, uh, illustrations Let's see if we want to load the effective thermal conductive of the, the center region or the device. We can first write the uh, uh, total energy across the system from the lambda formula, which basically is the summation of the uh, different final mode and the contribution of each final, each mode is the energy times the velocity times the transmission across the across the device regions. And uh, Based on the final gas model, we can also write the effective thermal conductivity as the summation of different modes. And the contribution of each model, each model is the energy times the velocity times the mean free press. If we compare these two formulas, we can see that the, the energy and the velocity are appear in both equations. So which means that we can we can set up some connection between the final transmission, the length of the device, and the mean free press. So here is what we do from the in the ray tracing simulation in details. So this is the total conductance of the system from the lambda formula. And uh, if we do some isotropic, well, some if we are some the transmission is insensitive to the azimuth angles, we can rewrite the conductance in the simple form. Uh, in, in the same way, we can also write the summer conductivity in, in terms of the mean free press. And uh, by comparing these two formula, we can get we can set up some connection between the uh, transmission and the effective thermal conductivity through these formulas. So basically, given a large structure, we basically need to track the transmission of the particle in the system, and from that we can get the back out the effect effective mean free pair for the system and the effective thermal conductivity of the system. Uh, this is the illustration of what we do in the Monte Carlo research, ray tracing simulation to 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 extract the thermal conductivity. Basically, we 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 inhibit inhibit uh, emit a lot of lamp final particle from the hot side and track what's the and uh, during the simulation we track different scattering process. For example, final final scattering, final boundary scattering, and the final surface scattering, and uh, and. Uh, and after that, we track what's the transmi total transmission of the, 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 the particles. And this is some uh, main algorithm in the software. So basically, we need to assign a random direction, location, and the mean free press for the newly emit sampling phonons. 
And uh, after that, we identify what's the initial green based on the initial location. And after that, we de detect the surface that the final hit as well as the distance to collision. And uh, after that, we compare the distance to collision with the mean free pass and determine whether our final final scattering or final boundary scattering will happen. And after that, we update the final state based on the scattering process and the boundary boundary condition until the until the either the particle is reflect back or transmit throughout the system. We repeating the above of process uh, as the as the sub, something particle is sufficient enough to to uh, to get the transmission of the systems. And uh, up, uh, with this method, we we compare the we predict effective mean free pass and the effective semiconductivity with 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 the analytical model in in some simple structure, and we find very good uh, met, uh, agreement between the our numerical method and the, the analytical analytical models, even uh, for the for both the lala y cross plane and the in plane summer transfer. And uh, the program is uh, par paralyzed by the open MP and the MPI parallelization. So the predict some conductivity and the uh, and the mean free pass distribution in other structure can be achieved within minutes. So basically uh, the 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 uh, the software will fill the gap between the atomic simulation which is done by LAMPS or VASP and the continu continuous scale simulation like console and uh, analysis analysis. And uh, here is the application of of the uh, ray tracing simulations. So basically, by the high pressure torsion, we can generate some uh, multi-phase large structure silicons, which consists of the mm, different phase of silicons. And uh, from the XRD measurement, we can we can we can get the information like what's of warning fraction and what's the green size of 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 each uh, uh, metal slab phase of silicons. And uh, one input, one in, and uh, once we know what's the what's the phase composition and uh, the material, we can apply the first principle calculation to to calculate the bulk final property or in each phase. So this is the mean free pass distribution uh, of final in each bulk phase, and we use that as a input parameters to the multi color ray tracing. And uh, after that, with that, we can easily get the. Uh, the effective semiconductivity of each uh, each each phase at a different green size, and uh, uh, with the help of the effect median effective median mod uh, serial, we can we can get the overall semiconductivity of the multi-phase large structure semi uh, large large structure silicon, and uh, actually the re predicted result match well with the experimental measurement. So basically, it's an uh, inexpensive. Uh, method to uh, to 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 predict if effective effective semiconductor in other structures. Uh, actually, we have we have also ongoing work to 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 really solve the phony coupled electron and the phonon uh, phonon multicolor uh, Boltzmann transfer equation, which have an uh, application in the local heat generation in the electronic device. So in the in the in the coupled in the coupled and monocolor simulations, we need to solve the Boltzmann transport equation for electron and the Boltzmann transport for equation for phonon interactively. And uh, from the from the electron uh, monocolor simulations, we can get what's the local heat generation for different to to different mode. And uh, for the for the for the phonon multicolor simulation, we can get the temperature profile locally, which will in turn uh, uh, if affect the electron phonon scattering process. And the one big challenge in this process is there are some big mismatch in the time scale between electron and phonons. For example, the, the velocity, the reaction time and of electron and the phonon are quite different. So it's a little bit challenge, and this part of work is still ongoing. As a as a simple illustration, we apply this coupling simulation to 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 predict what's the local heat generation in the in the 
in the in the silicon half in it doping silicon and the silicon diet. And we find that for example, this is the uh, the red light is the heat, local heat generation predict from the Monte Carlo simulation. And the, the dot dash light is the prediction from the draw, uh, finish, uh, finish law, the draw heating. We can say that the 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 the, the, the Monte Carlo simulation can predict the position as well as the peak heat flux more accurately compared to the uh, to the simple and analytical models. And uh, in the last, I will also talk a little bit about the fluid dynamic in confined space. And uh, we are interested in this problem because the, the dynamic of fluid uh, in confined, confined space are uh, normal in a lot of devices like uh, Nissan iron battery or the double layer compressors. So in this part, was, we also apply the uh, molecular dynamic simulation to understand what's the transport dyna dynamic of the ironic, ironic liquid confined between parallel graphing walls. So in the in the simulation, we study this type of ironic liquid, and uh, the the we're using the PCF F uh, inter inter uh, inter potential to to model the dynamic of ironic liquid. Basically, it consists of the bounding angle, dihedral, and the uh, wind was, and uh, as well as the cooling interaction between the ionic liquid. So the, the first part we do is uh, the structure analysis of the ironic liquid under confinement. And the left figure show the density, charge density, as well as the orientation of the ironic liquid at different locations of the, of the confined channel. So basically the, the, the graphing wall is loca located at the Position zero, and uh, from here to here, the distance from the confer wall increase. So, so first, the one, the first finding is the typical layer structure found in most of the uh, uh, liquid in confined space. But most interestingly, we find that the the uh, the cation ions have a pre preferred orientation under the confinement. This is because the at this certain relation, uh, certain orientation, the quantum, uh, the uh, ironic liquid and will have a maximum binding energy with the with the graphene wall. So, so after that, we study the dynamic transport properties. So, so the first property we study is the survival, survival probability of the ions at a different location away from the graphene wall. So basically. We, we, we select our virtual regions and uh, track how much uh, how many atoms uh, can survive in this region with 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 respect with with respect to the to the time and after that we can get some survival probability with respect to time for the cations and the ions. One interesting finding is that we find that the, the decay curve cannot be fit by a single exponential function, but instead it, it, it operates a, a double exponential decay function, which, which means that there are two time scales that determine the, the dynamic of ions on the confinement. The first one is the fast decay time constant, which is insistent, insensitive to the location of the ions in the wall. And it's a constant. And another interesting decay time is the slow decay times. We can see that uh, near the near near the graphing world, near, near the graphing world region, the decay times quite large compared to the distance far away from the wall. And uh, we 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 suspect this is due to the the layer structure and the local density peak near the graphing wall. So with that, we can also calculate what's the local diffusion coefficient of the cation and ions at a different, different location away from the wall. We find that uh, uh, once the iron are uh, about two nanometer away from the wall, the local diffusion coefficient are uh, more or less a constant and the value is equal to the, to the bulk diffusion coefficient of ions. But near the near the uh, near the graphene wall region within two nanometers, 
the diffusion coefficient show uh, linear dependence uh, uh, increase uh, from zero to the bulk value nearly. And uh, with that, we can we can we can come up. This is the we, this is the total diffusion coefficient with, uh, as a function of the wall separations. We can see that uh, at the the diffusion coefficient are suppressed at a small wall separation, but we are recover to the bulk values once the uh, wall separation is are more than ten nanometers. Actually, one major uh, interest finding is that we found that. Um, if we didn't add some uh, hydrodynamic correction to the to the calculation, the the diffusion coefficient can can be even larger than the bulk values, and uh, that's the reason why, for example, there's uh, quite a lot of contradiction in the previous uh, the the about the diffusion coefficient of irons and the confirmant in in the perfect uh, literature. But once we add the uh, hydrodynamic correct correction to the to the calculation the values reach to the uh block value where uh in the in the last part i will talk a little bit about the flow rate of the water at uh, larger channels so basically we we we're using a molecular dynamic uh, molecular system to to simulate to modeling the transport of water in in the small large, uh, uh holes from left side to the right side, and uh, the the interaction between the water molecule and the wall is modeling by the uh, Leonard Jones potential, and uh, we we add some twinning parameters to turn the uh, hydrophobicity of the wall. So from this figure, we can see that with the as as the as the wall increasing from from the uh, hydrophilic to the hydrophobic, they are the 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 number of dangling bond in the water cluster uh, is in, is increased a lot in the in these regions, and uh, we also calculate the total flow rate as a function of the hydrophobicity. We find that we also find that with the increasing uh, as the as the interaction change from the hydro to hydrophobic, the flow rate increased a lot. So our explanation is that uh, uh, at the at the less hydrophobic wall, there is there is less dangling bound. So the water are for, uh, form a water cluster and is less likely to transport across the channel. But if the wall is uh, hydrophobic. There will be some uh, uh, dangling bound uh, of water near the near the near the confined wall, and the cluster water cluster formed by hydrogen bond will break in these regions. And uh, as a result, and uh, as a result, the water are more likely to transport through through, through the large channels. So this work, this part of work is done in the University of Tokyo. Actually, actually, is need actually the work is needed by another group in the chemistry. So basically, they can synthesize a different larger channels, ranging from hydrophilic to hydrophobic, and they can using the use the parameter pressure. They can actually measure the flow rate of the water in different channels. They found that uh, for the hydrophobic channels, the the flow rate is is uh, even for them two order of magnitude larger than the flow rate in carbon nanotube. So uh, our simulation gives some proof or uh, support for these findings. So with that, that so that's all for my uh, presentation. Here is a summary. So basically, we utilize the wave packet simulation method to investigate the phonon boundary scattering process. And we resolve the role of the coherent phonon mode on thermal transport in colloidal quantum dot. Also, we propose a Monte Carlo retracing simulation method to efficiently evaluate the thermal conductivity of large structures. And uh, we identify the correlation between decay time and the local diffusion coefficient of iron ironic liquid on the confinement. So with that, I want to thank you for your attention and uh, would like to uh, answer your questions.
Yeah, thank you, Shaocheng, for the very interesting talk, very comprehensive like uh, work uh, re review. So with that, I think we can open our uh, question and answer uh, session. If there is any question from the audience, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask your question directly. Any questions? Uh, so, Dr. Shao, I have a question. Um, right. So, for the using using the the thermal electro uh, crystal to 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 harvest the energy, I'm uh, uh, actually I do not have uh, much knowledge about this. I I'm wondering compared to other energy harvest method, uh, what's the energy efficiency? And the typical energy efficiency for using this method to harvest energy, convert the thermal energy to the electrical energy. I know usually people use solar energy, use the PV. Um, mm -hmm. Usually it's about uh, less than 20% energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. Using the traditional uh, combustion method or the the steam power usually can reach to 30, 30 mm -hmm. to 40. Mm -hmm. And so what's the what's the range of the of that energy efficiency to use the uh, the thermal electro device to harvest the energy? So the the efficiency of the thermal electro device is determined by the uh ZT uh, 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 the factor ZT here, so which is a function of the uh, con electric conductivity feedback coffee and uh, uh, thermal conductive material. So normally the ZT value is around one in the in around one or like even less than one in the mostly common commercialized materials. So the so the actually the overall efficiency of for the energy conversion conversion is quite low compared to the to the other method. But the thermal electric uh, energy conversion have a Benefit that is maintain free, and uh, is very robust, uh, 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 robustic compared to other method. So, so that means if we want to increase the ZT, we need to reduce the thermal conductivity, right? Right. Yeah. So, so by by using the nano uh, structure to 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 maintain very where we know some of conductivity, what's the strategy uh, for, for design the new material, for example, wants to increase the ZH rate. And so they should generate uh, more interface or generate some nanostructure to, to make the conductivity small? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are taking the advantage that the uh, the the phonon mean free press are much larger than the electron mean free press, so which means that the phonon are more likely to scatter at the boundaries or the large structures. So for example, each interface or the each interface or boundary will impair the flow of the phonon particle, so that will reduce the thermal conductivity of the material. So that means uh, when you when you consider the nano well uh, thermal conductivity, you, you you consider there's uh, some roughness, there's uh, a surface structure. This yeah. actually this were this will help to generate a high energy efficiency, right? Yeah, yeah, surface if, yeah. Structure. If 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 yeah, if the if the if the thermal conductivity can be reduced in the nano well, then the ZT factor for the, this the thermal electric energy conversion efficiency of the lava will be much larger than the bulk material. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Shao Shao so here, so I have another question. So different topic. So for your phone on uh, 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 the wave packet. So I'm just uh, wondering. So uh, seems the wave packet is just a collection of different uh, like modes of your phone on, right? Yeah. Then uh, basically, how how are you gonna to uh, say uh, when you do the summation of each modes? So that modes. 
uh, are basically the exciting modes of the nano nano material itself, right? So say mm. uh, you can solve the say the eigenvalue problem of the for the material, and then you obtain different like uh, um um uh, order of modes of the materials itself. Then how mm. you gonna you can uh, pack uh, the modes into this kind of very packet. So I, I just can uh, having some trouble to understand the concept uh, conceptually. Okay, okay. So so basically in the formal wave package simulation, basically ideally we want to just uh excite it just one mode. Yeah. And get the transmission or speculality of transmission or speculality of that certain mode at the boundary or interface. And actually the total semiconductivity is summation of a different mode, right? Yes, yes. So basically, basically if we want to if we really want to using the information from the wave package simulation, we need to do a lot of simulation for different mode and do some uh, interpolation or extrapolation. Okay, then I, yeah. I, uh, I'm I thinking that maybe uh, for this kind of particular uh, sample, then you have uh, a lot of like uh, uh, no modes, right? Mm -hmm. Then how are you going to solve the eigenvalues uh, for such like a super huge like a matrix, like you build up, you have to build up the Hessian matrix, right? Yeah, yeah. And for this one, say if we have um ten thousand like items, and then for okay, each okay, one, okay. So so actually, the wave packet is excited at some regions far away from the surface. Far away from surface. Okay. So so basically, the 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 wave packet is ge generated by the eigenvector of the bulk material. Yes. So for for the bulk material, the super light, uh, super cell is small. So oh, you 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 just appear on the super cell. So basically, yeah, yeah. So we're using the bulk property to generate the wave packet. I see, I see. Uh, and then actually, actually the actually the actually the 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 large structure or the boundary where only a fract are three nanometers near the interface and uh, in the other regions the dynamics are very similar to the bulk system okay i see so no matter how big your sample is so you just uh, concentrate you just analyze the uh the eigen modes for the supercell okay yeah yeah, yeah. And that means uh this master is limited to the crystal uh, material right so if you have uh some kind of amorphous face it might be hard yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. okay got it got yeah, it yeah thank you yeah. very much so my second yeah. question in fact is about your uh the page uh, uh 36 if you can uh, uh turn to that page 36 yeah okay so for, for for this one uh so it seems um Oh yeah, so this might be another uh, related to another. So yeah, maybe since we are on this page, so for this uh package, so the uh, uh Shen BTE package, this package is used to solve the uh, the Boltzmann uh, uh function uh, equation, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then when you do this kind of uh, like a phonon transport simulation, so somewhere you mentioned uh you can uh emit a bunch of like uh, a phonon with different modes into the material. Then, so um, with that, so you consider, seems you consider each phonon uh, to be a particle or something so that you can trace the trajectory of that phonon. But phonon, yeah. uh, so, it, so if you just consider that as a particle, does it also follow the Newton's second law or? It's governed by different uh, like the equations. Uh, it's also follow the how do you say? So actually, it's governed by this equation, the the Boltzmann transport equation. Boltzmann transport, okay. Yeah, yeah. So if we treat that as a particle, and the, the f is the 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 particle density at a different uh, at a different location and the time. Different location. So the f is a function of the position and the wave vector and the time. 
So mm -hmm. it's basically, let me show you another one. So yeah, so sorry here. So basically the F is the um, distribution function of the final particle. So it's a function of the position and the wave vector or group velocity and uh -huh. the time. Then when you define, say, uh, see the picture below, like picture A, so you have that yellow particle. So that particle represents the phonon, right? Uh, so actually, the, the, the yellow particle represents the large structure. So for example, the, the, the fair material in the composite material. Oh, okay. Or, so that's not long. Then, yeah. yeah, then how about the pink, pink dot? Yeah, the pink, pink, pink point is the, the phonon particle. The phonon particle. Okay. Yeah. So the phonon particle, the motion of the phonon particle gonna be governed by the Boltzmann equation. Is that correct? Uh so the trajectory of the <coughs> phonon particle. Uh, how can yeah, so, so 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 the particle will ballistic transport mm -hmm. unless unless it hit some let me see. So so for example, here is the phonon particle. It will it will just transport the ballistically based on the direction and the group velocity. Oh, the direction and the velocity. Yeah, okay. until it hits some boundary or another particle. So the group of velocity is defined for each individual phonon particle. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah, see. Yeah, okay, yeah. got it. It helped me clear out uh, some kind of conceptual uh, oh, questions. Okay. And my okay. last question, in fact, is about your confinement effect. So you uh, simulate the like a water transport confined in a, in a channel, right? Uh, mm -hmm. at the very yes here so you you can also somehow define a water cluster and you mentioned so you observe some kind of dangling bonds but the dangling mm -hmm. the dangling bon bonds that you mentioned in fact uh, refers to the uh, like um uh the bond the um uh, bond the uh broken between the uh hydrogen atom and the oxygen atom is it is it correct it's more like the broken of the hydrogen bond between different water, the breaking of the hydrogen bond. Yeah, but I I don't see why uh, the bond are gonna to be break because the energy the bond energy is very very high. So instead of like uh, uh so I mean when you so you, you when you uh um, drive the water to flow through the channel, so mm -hmm. if the surface is hydro super hydrophilic. Then why not the whole group of water molecule prefer to attach to the to the surface? I'm not sure what kind of like a, a potential interatomic potential that you use for the for the water uh, molecule in this case. So the bond bond energy is, is very very high. I think it's much higher than the like a adhesion energy between the wall and the water molecule, but. Uh, maybe uh, yeah. by using some kind of uh, different uh, potential than yeah yeah. So the the dangling bond here is not the 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 bond between for the hydrogen atoms and the uh, oxygen atoms is uh -huh. referred to the to the hydrogen bond between two water molecules. Between two water molecules. Yeah. Then why there should be a bond between the hydrogen atom of of two water molecule. So each water molecule, the H2O, right? That group yeah. is considered as a water molecule. And yeah. uh, so basically there, there is just a, some kind of one of interaction between the- One of those interaction between two, um, two water molecules. But at a certain, at, yeah, at, at when, the, for example, when the two molecules are oriented in certain angle, and mm -hmm. the distance, yeah, there will be some hydrogen bond or the cooling interaction. I see, I see. Yeah, this is this is the reason the water water have very weak, very uh, uh, difficult property to capture yeah. because the hydrogen bond between molecules. I yeah. see. And then, by the way, may I ask what is the potential the, uh, you use here for this simulation for water I if I rem for the water or for the water. Uh, if I remember remember correctly, it's a TIP. 
Okay, I... three, right? Yeah, TIPC, three, yeah. Yeah, we use the same, but then maybe I I I should confirm my my my, my okay. previous simulation. Okay. But thank you very much for, for the further yeah. information. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is there any other question from the audience? Okay, so if not, I think uh, maybe we can stop here for today's uh, discussion. And with that, we would like to, uh, uh, I think, uh, Dr. Uh, 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 Zhao uh, again for the very uh, nice uh, 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 presentation. And uh, um, so, yeah, so uh, then, so is it our last uh, uh, seminar in today's uh, No, we'll have another one next week. Another one, Wednesday. okay. We'll be mm -hmm. our last. Okay, so then uh, for this semester, we have uh, another, the very last uh, uh, seminar in maybe uh, two weeks or? Next week. Next week, okay. So, um, so okay, so we hope to see everyone back again next week. And uh, uh, Xiaosheng, thank you very much for the very yeah, nice time.